Good morning, everybody. Charlie here with Red Summit RF. Call signs November Juliet 7 Victor. This morning, I am on Harkokala Mountain and I have uh, been joined by or am joining with uh, Alex. And so, Alex, good morning. Hi, this is Alex, K7 AEM. And uh, I'm, I joined him because I wasn't quite sure about this uh, road up to the top and uh, he's He's pretty good off-roader, and so I thought I'd hop on board with him and, and check it out and see what the road was like. It is, it is pretty rough, but uh, anyway, I wanted to have Alex take a few minutes to talk about uh, his off-road experiences and maybe a few thing, a few pointers on that. So take it away, Alex. Hi. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're just getting into uh, off-roading, like for doing the, the summits on the air, some of the basic things you really want to start off with is when you do your first runs, and really all runs, it's good to have two vehicles in case you're remote and there is a problem. It can be a mechanical problem, a trail problem, etc. First of all, before you do anything, you want to make sure you're safe. And if things aren't safe, you need to, to stop there. As important as safety, not, not quite as important as safety, but up there, is having a good time. If you are uh, not enjoying yourself getting up to that summit, if, if you don't think it's safe to climb that summit, if you get up there and it's, and it's too vertical, you need to stop. And if you're not having fun, if you're if you're digging through cactus or it's too hot and it's you're just not enjoying yourself, you really have to question why you're going to go go through with that. And finally, you know, if you're safe and you're having a good time, get up and do that summit or whatever you're doing out there. So, first off, I think one of the first things when you're uh, when you're you're going off road, one of the things that make the, the biggest difference is being able to air down your tires. It doesn't matter if you're in a Jeep, in your pickup truck, whatever you're doing. When you're going down those dirt roads and you're taking all those bumps and those vibrations, by airing your tires down, today we're running about 16 pounds on all the tires. Normally I run 35 pounds on the roads. As soon as I go off-road, I drop it down to about 13 pounds, excuse me, 16 pounds. And the advantage of that is your tires then become an active shock absorber. Every time you hit a little bump, um, you're not feeling it through the shocks. Your tires are absorbing it. It also is giving you significantly better traction. We came up a very, very steep trail and two thirds of the way, I was just in two wheel drive, second gear, just, just putting up it on these nice, nice soft tires. Um, so that really is vehicle preparation and, and getting to vehicle preparation, of course, you're going to want to make sure you have enough fuel. You want to make sure your vehicle's in good condition. You know, if, if you're, if you're waiting to do an oil change, do it before you get out there because when your engine's lugging as you're going up and down hills or working way through a wash, that's when that oil is going to break down on you. So make sure you've got your maintenance in good shape. Make sure you've got a reliable spare tire. And part of the whole airing down is the ability to air back up again. Um, we've all seen the little cigarette lighter powered air pumps. Those aren't really good enough for um, airing tires back up again after you've lowered them down that far. You're talking four tires. Um, and those little pumps are going to melt. So you want to go sure, make sure you have a, they call them continuous duty pumps, which means it can sit there and run all day long with that pump going without melting down. You're going to pay more for it. But when you look at off-road modifications to your vehicle, that's one of the things that's going to give you the most bang for the buck. Before you go and start rebuilding suspensions or drivetrains, lifting, lowering, whatever you want to do, just the ability to move the tires up and down. Uh, this is a 2001 Jeep TJ, and it has a six-cylinder inline engine that was originally designed for the 1950 Nash passenger car. This tire, as, as car companies are bought and sold, their technology is bought and sold. 2001, Jeep was still putting this into uh, this engine, into these Jeeps, just because it's a piece of agricultural equipment. I can put this thing on a hill and it's just gonna idle up the hill just because it's got so much darn torque. Um, and that, that, that really is, uh, gives me a great feeling of confidence when I'm climbing something, knowing that I'm not going to have to run up my revs. Because if I'm running up my revs, then I could spin my tires. And once I spin my tires, I don't have that traction anymore. I try to idle over any obstacle just because my tires aren't going to break loose. I, I want to be able to just come over it gently and then get moving again. Um, a lot of folks you see doing the send it method. In other words, you get up there and you just crank it. And uh, they break drive shafts, they break suspension, they tear up the, the, the wilderness. We're out here enjoying this. We don't want it to be destroying the wilderness. We have a lot of uh, money and pride in our vehicles. Um, we don't want to destroy them. 
uh, gentle as you go really is, is a, a good rule when you're four wheeling. Okay, so the topic today is, is about the frequencies that are most used by summits on the air operators. Recently, a few people have asked me how I get so many contacts, and so I wanted to go over that real quick. When it comes to VHF, UHF, really it, it it's all comes down to how close you are to, to high populated areas. And also, it's possibly uh, has to do with how much you're drumming up uh, business for yourself. Uh, so you'd want to spot yourself and you'd want to talk to people who are out there who could chase you and let them know ahead of time that you're going out on a summit. Uh, so both of those things are important. Here in, in uh, Arizona, we also have a, a very strong sense of community and, and trying to bring more people into the hobby. And that's helped. In the, in the Phoenix metro area, we've got a lot of new, ha new hams and new uh, soda participants. And uh, that's not by accident. We want them there so that we can have more people chasing us and more people on the hills. And so when it comes to how I get so many people on VHS, UHF, UHF, really it's just because we have a community and so if you don't I would encourage you to start uh, taking people out on the hill and getting more people uh, into the hobby and that's the way to do it I think other than that it's just a matter of how close you are to a populated community so when it comes to HF there are a couple of other things that you need to keep in mind and that is again you need to alert people uh, although you know you're reaching out further so it's not like local but you still need to put up an alert on soda watch the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure when you uh, get up on a summit that you have an antenna that's efficient uh, I think that from my opinion anyway and, and from tests the most efficient antenna you can have is probably the dipole uh, an NFED half wave is, is slightly less good but still pretty good uh, I would say that's my second choice uh, as an NFED half wave uh, and then uh, after that they kind of go downhill you definitely do not want to bring up a vertical antenna. They just they just don't seem to work well up on the summits. When you're on top, you want to make sure you activate multiple frequencies. If you just hop on one or two frequencies, then you're not going to get all the people who want who want to chase you because the bands perform and act differently. So if you were to hop on, say, for example, 20 meters, it would skip over many of the people who want to work you because the 20 meter band is long. And so you'd work the East Coast and the West Coast maybe, and maybe you get some DX. But there's so many people that won't be able to hear you on 20 meters. So what you got to do is then hop on 40. Well, when you hop on 40, then you're going to get a few other people a little closer. Maybe uh, for here in Arizona, you get some Colorado people, Montana, you know, uh, but then what about the people who are really close, like uh, within, a, you know, maybe 100 miles or so? Uh, if you can't get them on uh, 20 and 40, which often happens, then you got to switch to 60 meters. And then 30 meters is a band that just is somewhat unpredictable. But if you work through multiple bands, you're going to get a lot more people. I'd say, you know, maybe twice or more of the people if you work just 20 and 40. If you, if you work another 60 and a 30 and maybe a 17, uh, try those out as well. You're going to get more people. And the last thing I would say is when you get on a band, I would say try to call CQ and stay on that band for at least 10 minutes, if not 15, or even longer. I know people who stay on each band 30 minutes. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of people who, who uh, will chase you long after you think there aren't anybody else out there. Because people sometimes don't get around to checking the uh, spot on Soda Watch. And so stay on the summit for a little bit of time and also stay on each band for a little bit of time. When you do, you're going to find that you, you end up working a lot more people. So uh, the last thing I wanted to do is uh, go over the frequencies that are most used by summits on the air operators. And so I'm going to display in the video those frequencies, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over them here real quick uh, from the bottom to the top. So when you are on a VHF, UHF, particularly two meters, I would say the Adventure Band 146.580 is the best place to go. The uh, next best place would be 146.520, which is the national calling frequency. For six meters, you're going to be good to go on 50.095 for CW and 50.125 for sideband. For 10 meters, 28.062. And for 10 meters sideband is 28.4. Uh, 12 meters is 24.915. And uh, that's, that's going to be for CW. And then for sideband, you'll be at 24.950. 15 meters CW, 21.062. Sideband 21.350, 17 meters 18.090, sideband 18.130, 20 meters 14.02, sorry 14.062 uh, for CW and sideband is 14.342. If the bands are busy there on 14.062, I sometimes hop up to 14.110 as well for summits on for uh, for CW. 
for 20 for 30 meters it's all the same you don't get to use sideband for that uh, band so then we'll that's usually in the uh, 10.113 area and then for 40 meters is 7.033 for CW and 7.185 or 7.285 for sideband uh, 60 meters we usually uh, try to do it on 4.332 and then 80 meters 3.562 uh, for CW. Uh, sideband I usually don't use for uh, 60 meters and 80 meters so I couldn't tell you. But uh, what I would say on these frequencies is you, you hop on the freq on the uh, radio, you go to that frequency that I mentioned for the band that, and, and that's where you know you'll find those soda operators. If the band's clear go for it but if it's not then just kind of work your way up the band or maybe sometimes down the band just a little bit to make, so make your room, some room for yourself and then just start calling CQ there and that's where they'll find you and so if you do that you're going to be able to find a lot more contacts. So let's give it a shot. Let's get on the radio and, and uh, see how it works. All right. So let's see. I'm going to turn this down. So we're going to go to 60 meters first. And I'm going to put in my alert, not my alert, my spot for 60 meters and start calling CQ. And after that, we'll get Alex on a frequency. Let's see if he. Yeah. That was Keith, Summit to Summit, on uh, Mike November 128, or 120, so. So that was Ken over in uh, Tucson. That's one of the, Ken and, and uh, Keith, both of those guys are two I probably wouldn't have gotten unless I used 60 meters. So, uh, okay, here we go again. Mike from November Kilo 3 Hotel, Peak November to Peak. November Kilo 3. Peak to Peak, November Kilo 3 Hotel, do I have that correct? Hey firm, Kilo 7 Alpha Echo Mike, you're uh, 4x6, 4x6 on MN131. I have you, oh let me get that called the uh, Mountain Peak again, I apologize. Say again for uh, NKH. Please come back with the summit number. Uh, it's uh, Whiskey 7 Alpha, Mike November 131. Mike November 131. That looks familiar. Fine business. Thank you for the contact. And of course, I am on Whiskey 7 Alpha, Alpha Whiskey 037. Caught the Alpha Whiskey 037. Signal report? Signal report's 59. I've got you loud and clear in here. Thank you for the 59. Kilo 7 Alpha Echo Mike and K3H. Have fun today. 73. Perco up five. Whiskey 0 Mike, November Alpha. Kilo 7 Alpha Echo Mike, Kilo Romeo 7 Romeo, Kilo Summit to Summit. Summit to Summit, please come back. Yeah, this is Kilo Romeo 7 Romeo Kilo QSL. I hear Kilo Romeo 7 Romeo Kilo. This is Kilo 7 Alpha Echo Mike. How you copy? Okay, QSL, QSL. I, I have you a 5x4, five 5x4. By four, five by four. And my summit reference is Whiskey 7 Alpha Stroke Mike November 120. Whiskey 7 Alpha Stroke Mike November 120. QSL. QSL, I have you on MN120 and I am on Alpha Whiskey 037. How do you copy? Okay, fine business. Uh, well, thank you very much for Summit to Summit. Hope you guys are having fun up there today. Beautiful day to be on a summit. Enjoy, 7-3s, K7AEM calling CQ Soda, CQ Soda. K7AEM on Harkwahala Summit. Whiskey 5, Oscar Delta Sierra. Alpha. Sorry, 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 sorry. I copy Whiskey 5, Oscar Delta Sierra. This is K7AEM on Harkwahala Summit. That is Whiskey 7 Alpha, 
Alpha Whiskey, 037. I have you 58. A QSL, you're about a 5, or 44, 44 in Oklahoma this afternoon. Thanks for activation. Have fun. I copy 44 in activation. Thank you for the uh, for the chase. K7AEM calling CQ Soda. K7AEM on Harkohala Peak in Arizona. Whiskey Zero, Mike, November Alpha. All right, so we're wrapping up here. Seems like we did pretty good. I uh, haven't counted them yet, but I bet we're between 60 and 80 contacts here. Worked uh, six bands. We did, we did uh, 23 centimeters, two meters, and then we did uh, uh, 60, 40, 30, and 20 meter band. And we did uh, mostly CW. Uh, Alex got on CW for the first time, did great. And then we did a little bit of side band on 20, so we did good. Had a good time, and it's uh, like all great things, and we are going to end it here. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of your support. If you feel like uh, supporting this channel and keeping it ad-free, go ahead and check out the link below in the video uh, description, and you can uh, find a way to do that. And with that, we'll say 73 to everybody.